So we know that the Lord picked the Jews, but He didn't pick them because He loved them more. He didn't pick them because they were the biggest nation. In fact, He didn't, He told them, "You don't even deserve this." But I'm letting picking you because you're wicked, but you're not as wicked as the other nations. This is what He's telling. Them. So why did the Lord pick the Jews? What did He pick them for? In Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 12. But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me. Now get this. This is why he, he chose them. He said, you have been chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been. There never will be. I, yes I, am the Lord. And there is no other Savior. I have declared you saved. Then I saved you and proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. So these verses right here, he's told them, he's told them quite a bit. He said, they're to be true witnesses. He says, I'm picking you because I want you to be witnesses for me. I want you to witness to the world who I am. That I am God. The only God. This is what he's telling them. Now, listen to what I'm saying here. Because what he's telling the Jews to do, and they failed, guess who's that, that responsibility is on now? Christians. Since they failed at it, now it's on us. Just remember that. So I'm, he's speaking to the Jews here, but further down I'm going to show you, since they failed, it's going to be our responsibility. So he said, I've chose you to be witnesses for me. If He is our Lord, if He is your Lord, then that means we are His servant. servants. And what do servants do? They obey. They listen and obey. That's what servants do. If a servant didn't obey his, his master, what would happen? I'd beat him. But that's what I'm showing, it's showing here. God, He says we're His servants. So servants, I'm trying to show you. Servants, what do they do? They listen and obey. What do they obey? What do we obey? the Bible, the Word of God. He chose them to know Him and to believe. He chose them so they could know Him. How many of us read our Bible every night? Well, I do mine in the morning. <laughs> okay. How many of us read our Bible any time of the day? This is the only way we're going to get to know God. Right here. I mean, it's Sunday at church is good. Wednesday, Tuesday night, that's good. But it's not good enough. Because if you only eat twice a week physically, if you only eat food twice a week for your body, are you going to be strong? No. You're going to be weak. You're going to have a weak body. It's the same thing. Exactly the same thing spiritually. If you're not into this, you're going to be weak. So people who go to church and maybe go on Wednesday night or Tuesday night, and that's all they're getting, they're going to be weak Christians. So this is the way we need to believe in them and know them is this. How can you know about your father if you don't read about him? To make sure they understood that he is God alone, is what he said. To make sure that you know, tell the, the world that I am God alone. And there is none before me, and there is none, there's not going to be any after me. So, Mormons, if there's any Mormons listening, no, there's not going to be, we're not gods and we're going to have our own little world. Because that's what the Mormons teach. That's what they teach. You become a god and you get your own little world. It must be in the Book of Mormons because it ain't in the King James. And he says, there is no other Savior. Now listen, God said there is no other Savior. God said, right? In Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold... Now this is when Jesus was born. This is, this is when Jesus was being born in, in Bethlehem. It says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. God says there's only one Savior. And then right here, when Jesus was born, the angel said, Unto you this day a Savior is born. Now, either the Bible made a big mistake or Jesus is God. Amen? That's the only way, two ways you can take it. Either there's a big mistake in here, because God said He was a Savior and there is no other, right? 
I just read it to you. But then this angel of the Lord came to, to uh, when Jesus was born and said, unto, unto us a Savior is born today. So like I said, it can only mean those two things. Either the Bible made a big mistake or Jesus is God. Another thing he says is that he's done many, many wonderful works for them, which he did. He, he helped them in many battles where they had victories. So the Jews, I mean, the Lord did all kind of miracles with, for them. And I mean, it showed that God showed himself mightily with them. Sadly, after the Lord has done all this for them in battles, gave them victories here and there and did all kind of stuff for them. Sadly, sadly, they were still deaf and blind because they still, they still didn't worship him. Oh, and for a little while they did when the Lord gave them victory over something. Oh, praise God and everything, but little time goes by, they don't forgot what he did. That's kind of like in our lives. When he works a miracle in our life, oh, thank you, Jesus, whatever it may be. And then in a little while, you just go on about your own way, not praising the Lord. How many of us know that Sunday is not the Lord's day? How many of us know that? Every day, every day is the Lord's day, not just Sunday. That's what the world, the world, do you hear me? The world has made Sunday the Lord's day. But biblically, every day is the Lord's day. Every day. We should praise Him every day. In fact, the churches back then, which we totally fell at now, but the churches back then met daily. They met daily. And what else happened? People were getting saved daily. We go in that church building over there. We're all comfortable. We leave and that's it. We're through with church. I've done my part. I was a Christian for two hours. Now I go back to my own thing. Seriously, how many people do that? I'm not saying y'all do it, but there's people who do that. They're a Christian for two hours on Sunday morning. Then they go home. That's it. So we can't say too much about the Jews here. They failed badly. But Christians today are failing badly too. We're going to find out what a real Jew is. He picked the Jews, but the Jews failed him. But Abraham, he, he made a promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that the seeds and all, would they would have a big nation. And that's going to happen. But it's not going to happen with just the Jew nationality. Okay, let's just see that. So what is a real Jew? In Romans chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. Because they are the seed of Abraham. And right here, the seed means descendants. Because they are the descendants of Abraham, are they all children? The question is, is the children from Abraham, are they really Jews just because they're from Abraham? That's what the question is. But in Isaac, shall thy seed be called? That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Now he's saying, these are not the children of God. Because they were born in the flesh, a Jew, their nationality, thats they were born as a Jew. Because mama and daddy was a Jew, they were a Jew. But right here he's saying, but they're not real Jews. He says the real Jews are from the seed. And who's the seed? Jesus is the seed. He says the children of promise are counted for the seed. So they have Jews who were born from Abraham, but they're not spiritual Jews. They're just Jews from nationality. And we're going to see what it says. Because it says in Galatians 3.14. That the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Now it says right here. Jesus is blessing Abraham. For all people. Not just the Jews. It's no longer just the Jews. Right here it says. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. But how is it going to come to us? Through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So what is the promise? The promise is Jesus. The Holy Spirit. That's what the promise is. Ephesians 1.13 In whom ye also trusted that after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after ye believed... You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So that's what the promise, the blessing of Abraham is. Is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. 
Jesus Christ. It says the same thing in Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. For ye, now listen, for you are not a true Jew just because you were born of a Jewish parents. Okay, did you get that? This is the word of God right here. You are not a real, a true Jew just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the ceremonies of circumcision. You know, Jews, you know, the little boy, when the eight days after their birth, they have to get circumcised. They have to get cut. And that's what it's saying right here. Because you have gone, just, just because you were born, your parents were Jews, and because you went through the ceremony of circumcision, he said, no, that doesn't make you a Jew, a real Jew. Verse 29, he says, no, a true Jew is one whose heart is right with God. That's what a real Jew is. Someone whose heart is right with God. And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law. Rather, it is a change of heart produced by God's Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. This is what a real Jew is. Circumcision of the Jews when they're eight days old. He says, no, that's not the cutting I'm talking about. I'm talking about the cut of the heart. Where you cut your heart, you put your old heart behind you, and now you got a new heart. And that's what Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's, if you got a cut heart, if you had a circumcision of your heart, that means you've made your heart right with the Lord. And when you make your heart right with the Lord, you what? You become a new creature. So when someone says, oh, I'm born again. I've given my life to the Lord, but I see no change in them. Well, I have to doubt if they really did it or not. Because right here it says, therefore, if any man, if any man be in Christ, if any man has Jesus in them, the Holy Spirit, it says he is a new creature. It didn't say, okay, uh, after you receive the Holy Spirit, you're going to stay the same. It didn't say that. It says you become a new creature. He says, old things have passed away. I mean, I was a partier, a drinker, and you name it, I did it. But when I became a Christian, old things passed away with me. Because I gave my life to the Lord. That's what I'm saying. If you've got people out there, oh, I'm a Christian, but you see they're still living the same kind of life, I would doubt it. In fact, the Bible says you know them by their fruits. You know a Christian by their fruits. And I've had, I had a teaching on that. Old things is meaning like money. How many people out there are money hungry? You might have some who are not, but the majority are. Money hungry, money hungry. They're, the Lord says to do what? To be content with what we have. That's what the Lord says. Be content. Be content with what you have. But a lot of people are not content with. They have to have what the Joneses have. They have to. They can't let nobody outdo them and get in the boat, car, truck, whatever it is. They're money hungry. Or like I said, drunk. If they drank, if they got drunk all the time and they still getting drunk, have they become a new creature? Mm -mm. Now, listen. If you have this problem, if you like to drink and you... I mean, just even if you're an alcoholic, say, Lord, I, I like this, but I do want to give it up for you, but I can't. I have to depend totally on you to take this alcohol away from me. And guess what? God will give you the power to do it. He will. So you can be a Christian and still drink, but in your heart, you really want to quit. The Lord knows our hearts. People might fool people, but you can't fool the Lord. Can't fool the Lord. And you want to be accepted by friends. You won't be popular. I mean, you do what they do. Uh, they like you because you're there and you, you're you popular. Well, guess what? Christians are not popular. If you're a born-again Christian, you are not going to be popular in this world. Why? Because the Lord says, we are no longer of the world. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. There's several verses like that. He says, you're no longer of the world. You're in the world, but you're no longer of the world. So, if you want to keep your popularity in the world, you can't be a Christian. Maybe you were a liar. You know? Lord, I just lie all the time. I can't help it. But will you take it away from me? See, a lot of people, there's a lot of people who think, 
Well, I can't be a Christian until I quit this or I quit that. Well, you're not going to quit it. The only way you're going to quit it is with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you're going to quit it. Not smoking. Oh, I tried. I mean, I was. I mean, I really wanted to quit smoking, but I just couldn't quit. I was, it was a habit. As soon as I got born again, that was my first prayer to the Lord was, Lord, take these away. Within one week, they were gone. And he didn't replace it with me eating or candy or a lot of people who quit smoking, they start eating candy or whatever. No, when the Lord does something, he does it right. Okay? When he does it, he does it right. He's not going to take that away, but then give you a bunch of candy to get to eat. You become a new creature. Maybe you maybe you stole, and there's different ways of stealing. There's different ways of stealing. Now, this one, this one, and this one. Sorry, y'all don't. Y'all three don't, but y'all three do. Y'all know my past. Did I become a new creature? I'd have to say yes, totally. If anybody would have known I was going to be a preacher or a teacher, they would have said, yeah, right. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 getting back on the Jews. It says, What advantage then hath the Jew? Is there any profit in the ceremony of circumcision? Almost what it says up there. Like I said, this circumcision is the one that comes from the heart. They're saying, is there any profit? Do we profit any of being a Jew? Galatians 2.11 says, When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not with a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision. The cutting away of your sinful nature. That's what Galatians 2.11 says. So we're, we're circumcised. But it's a spiritual circumcision that we have. You understand? Y'all with me? Mm-hmm. And then verse 2 it says, Much very every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. God has chosen the spiritual Jews. Spiritual Jews. Remember what I said a while ago? Remember what God's telling the Jews back then. Because they failed. Who's the Jews now? We are. So he's saying right there, he's saying right here, he is committed to oracles of God. God is speaking through us. This is what he's saying. God has chosen spiritual Jews to speak boldly through us. In fact, it says in Ephesians 6.20, Ephesians 6.20 says, For which I am an ambassador, this is for born-again Christians, for which I am an ambassador in in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, the Christian, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. God says, uh, don't go out there like a wimp. I'm a Christian. Do you want to receive the Lord? No, no. Hey, my God is all powerful. He is. He created the heavens and the earth. The air that you breathe is from God. It's from my Father. Go out there with boldness. Don't be scared about talk about the Lord. The, the, right now, the air we're breathing, where's that coming from? He created everything. Everything. The air, everything. The water we drank, He made it. So, we got to realize, we, please, you got to recognize who you are. I am Jesse, child of God. That's who I am. And if you're an alcoholic, this... My name is Jesse Martinez. I'm an alcoholic. Oh my gosh. Christians do that. You have Christians that are an AA. And AA tells you, oh, you'll always be an alcoholic. Don't let me get started, okay? I am Jesse. Now, if I was an alcoholic, I can say, I am Jesse, son of God, child of God. I have a drinking problem, but my father's going to take that away. away. Now, when I was younger... My mother told me I was an alcoholic. My best friend told me I was an alcoholic. So the chances are, I was an alcoholic. But when I gave my life to the Lord, that went away. I can drink a beer right now. When I go out and eat dinner, sometimes I'll drink a beer. Can you do that in AA? Mm, They won't let you touch another drop of liquor. But the Lord, the Lord took that away. I don't have to worry about getting... To becoming an alcoholic again because the Lord took that away now I can enjoy a beer you know just because it's a beer just I get tired of drinking water sometimes and I really don't like drinking soda so I'll drink a beer but we we have the you have the power of God living in you 
How many of us feel that? How many of us feel? How many of us feel that? I mean, really, truly feel it that you can wake up in the morning and you can attack anything because you know God lives in you. Mm-hmm. We have too many Christians living defeated lives. I see it all the time. I see Christians, Christians, born again Christians out there, living defeated lives. The devil's got his thumb on them, and he's they're letting them. The devil can't touch. If you're a born again Christian, the devil cannot touch you. Mm-hmm. Cannot. The verses say, "Greater is he that is in you." Than he that is in the world. And who's in the world? Satan. He's the prince and power of the world right now. But God says greater is he that is in you. And who's in us? So he is. If we can take a hold of that. Believe me. Our days would be much easier. All this depressed. Sadness. Ulcers. Stress. Wouldn't have all that. I'm telling you. We wouldn't have all that. Because you give it to the Lord. Say Lord. Whatever it is, whatever this problem is, whatever it is, God, I'm giving it to you. Take care of it. I'm not going to worry about it. You, I'm giving it to you. We can do that. God said he wants from the smallest problem to the biggest problem. He wants all your problems because he can solve every one of them. Amen. Now, how do we get this power to speak boldly? Acts 1, verses 4 and 5, it says, And being assembly together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. He's talking about the disciples. That they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So there's water baptism. When we get bapt- when we give our life to the Lord, we get water baptized. But that's, that's not where you get the power. You get the power. You, there's a Holy Spirit that, that's in you. The Holy Spirit comes in you. We need to learn how to let the Holy Spirit come out. Not leave us. I mean come out of us where we can use it. These guys were saved. They were born. They were Christians. And the Lord told them, You got baptized by water. But no. You're going to get baptized by the Holy Spirit. As he said, Wait for the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 1.8 it says, But you shall receive power. He's talking to Christians. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be, what was the Jews' responsibilities? Now this is for us. Acts 1.8, this is New Testament, this is for us. This is for us, Christians. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It belonged to the Jews. They failed. Now God is saying, hey, I'm going to give you the bonus. I'm going to use your oracles. I'm going to give you this bonus to go out and do what the Jews, the nationality Jews, Israel, couldn't do. Amen? Amen. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? Are we going out there with bonus and telling people that they need to be born again? Because if they're not, they're going to hell. Seriously. If some if you have a friend or a relative and you know they're not born again, I mean, do you want to see them go to hell? Well, that's what we do when we don't say nothing. That's what we're doing. We're saying it's not going to bother me that you're going to hell because I'm not going to tell you anything. You have the words, you have the power. God is going to use your oracles to speak to them. The Lord is. I'm not saying you that you go to church and you learn a program, step one, step two. Uh, the church has got too many programs. The church is, I mean, we need to go to church. Church is good. But a lot of times church do programs. Instead of using the, the Holy Spirit, they use programs. First you tell them this verse. Then you tell them this verse. Let the Holy Spirit speak through you. Okay, I went to a church once, not this one, but another church. And they had a soul winning class to learn how to witness to people. And I didn't go, and the pastor was like, I know how you like to witness to people. Why aren't you in that class? I said, I don't use a program, Pastor. I said, I let the Holy Spirit give me the words to say. Why do I do that? Because this is what I learned in the Bible. The Bible says they're drawn by the Holy Spirit. They're not tra- drawn by programs. Oh, just step one, step two. In fact, a girl came up to me 
uh, it was several weeks later, she said, you know, I was talking to somebody about the Lord, and I was doing that step, step one, step two, but I really felt like saying something else. I said, listen to me, don't ever put program in front of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Because that's what she was doing. She was doing the step, step, step. But she felt like she should have said something else. That was the Holy Spirit. Don't ever let a program take the place of the Holy Spirit. And I have a teaching on it. It's called Our Ministry. We should be out there telling the lost people, Hey, there is a Jesus. There is a God. And you, you're going to live forever. Everybody's going to live forever. Everybody is going to live forever. But right now you have to make a choice on whether you want to live forever in hell or you want to live in forever in heaven with God. That's the choice. That's it. There is no middle. There is no purgatory. It's just heaven or hell. That's it. And that's what the, that's, that's the choice they have. And they have a hard time with that. Uh, come on. Let's see. Do I want to live in hell and burn for eternity? Or do I want to live on the streets of gold in heaven with God? Come on. Really, seriously. Is that, is that really hard to make? But when you give your life to the Lord, what do you have to do? you got to die to self. So the Lord says, I'm going to give you all this, but you got to die to self. you got to lose your life to save it. That's what he says. Amen? Because the Jews failed, and now he's using us, he's not, he's not through with the Jews yet. Okay, the Jews are still in his picture. Let's read. In Ezekiel 36, verses 17 through 24, it says, Son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by the evil way they lived. To me, their conduct was as unclean as a woman's menstrual cloth. They polluted the land with murder and worshipped of idols. So I poured out my fury on them. I scattered them to many lands to punish them for their evil way they had lived. But when they were scattered among the nations, they brought shame on my holy name. For the nation said, These are the people of the Lord. Talking about the Jews. But he couldn't keep them safe in his own land. Then I was concerned for my holy name. This is what God is saying. He's, he was concerned about his holy name. On which my people brought shame among the nations. Because they acted, this is what happened to them. Luke twenty-one twenty-four. Because they brought shame on the Lord. Luke twenty-one twenty-four. They will, they will be killed by the sword or sent away as captives to all the nations of the world. And Jerusalem will be trampled down by the Gentiles until the period of the Gentiles come to an end. Now remember, remember that. In Romans, it's also in Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 28. It says, yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship Him as God, or even give Him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideals of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Who's the author of confusion? Satan. Satan. So why do you think they were confused? They weren't working, walking. If you're not walking with the Lord, you're going to be confused. Verse 22. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. Anybody who's not born again Christian is an utter fool. That's the word of God. I'm, you know, boy, Jesse, no, no, that's the word of God. People who do not accept Jesus Christ as Lord are utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the Creator Himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. In verse 26, That is, is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relationship with a woman, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of their, this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve. 
since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolishness thinking and let them do the things they should never been done. How far away is this country getting away from God? How many states are allowing same-sex marriage? God says right here, it's a sin. Women with women, it's a sin. Men with men, it's a sin. But this world is getting so far away from the Lord. Let me stay with the lesson. They were living wicked lives. They were very unclean was what he was saying. They murdered. Abortion. We legalize abortion. We let doctors kill babies. This country is a murdering country. They worship idols that, and, and pray to them. They kneel down to them. Do we, have, do we have religions today that kneel down to statues? This country is doing the same thing that the Jews did. Serious? Seriously. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Men with men, women with women. Today, that's happening. Do we have people bound down to statues? That's happening today. They didn't worship the true God. They started worshiping what? The creation instead of the creator. I worship the creator. When they said he said he scattered them abroad, Israel has been scattered. Uh, I forgot the date when they were they got that God scattered them. But I'll I'll get that that in a second. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Okay, verse twenty two. Back to Ezekiel thirty six, verse twenty two. Therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the servant Lord: I am bringing you back. No. We're going to see that God's going to bring the, the, the people of Israel, the Jews, not, not us, but the, the, the nation of Jews, Israel. We're going to see that, that he's going to bring them back. It says, I am bringing you back, not because you deserved it. Just remember that. We need to always remember that we don't deserve God's grace. We don't deserve it. If we deserved it, then it wouldn't be called grace. I am doing it to protect my holy name on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. I will show you, I will show how holy my great name is, the name on which you brought shame among the nations. And when I reveal my holiness through you be, before their very eyes, saith the sovereign Lord, then the nations will know that I am the Lord. For I will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land. He's talking to the Jews. He's talking to Israel Jews. Okay, This is what God is saying about them. The ones who failed. Not us. He's talking about them. And in Jeremiah 33, 25 and 26 it says, But this is what the Lord says. I, will, I would no more reject my people than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servants, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. Do we still have night and day? Yes. Is the earth and the sky still here? Still here. Hasn't it? The Lord, the Lord brought Israel as a nation. The, the Lord allowed them to become a nation again in 1967. The nation of Israel... Remember, Israel was scattered. They didn't. They had. They didn't have no country. The Jews were just scattered. The Lord said, "I'm going to bring them back," and He did. In 1967, the Jews re took over, went back to Jerusalem, and now they rule. That that's their nation. That's their country. And the Lord said that He was going to do it, and it's been done. In 1967, Israel was no longer under Gentile rule, meaning. They were under everybody because they were so scattered. They weren't even a nation. They were under everybody else. And now they're a nation again. So the Lord brought them back as a nation, not because they deserved it. Remember, it's not because they deserved it. Like I've always said about us, don't ever, when you start thinking you deserve this from the Lord, don't, don't do it. But he did it for what? To protect his name. To protect his name. Like I said, we've seen this happen. And this should be very exciting to us. It should be very exciting to us because when that happens, he's going to do what it says in the next verse, verse 26. I will give you a new heart. Now he's talking to the Jews, the nation, Jews, Israel. 
He's talking to them. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your star, your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my degrees and be careful to obey my regulations. This is going to happen after the rapture. Now we know the rapture. We know about the rapture. Jesus is coming again. It's going to be the rapture. But he's not going to set foot on the earth. He's going to come again. He's going to come for his people. Everybody who's born again, that's who he's coming for. Whoever's not born again is going to stay on the earth. Then after that, the tribulation, seven-year tribulation. Now during the seven-year tribulation, that's when the Jew, that's when he does this with the Jews. Who's going to be preaching the word during the tribulation? And in case you don't know, it's the Jews. It talks there's 144,000. That's going to be Jews. This is this right here is prophecy. The Jews will will praise God in the tribulation. The Jews will recognize. Right now, they don't recognize Jesus as Lord, as God. You know, all right. Jews do not accept Jesus Christ as God, right now. But after during the tribulation, this is verse 26. This is what God's going to do. They're going to open their eyes. They're going to see. Yes, Jesus was. Who is the Messiah, the Christ. And in the tribulation, this is what they're going to do. The Jews will have a new heart, but it won't be until the tribulation. They're going to be 144,000 of them. That's what it says in Revelation. It's about, which if you want to see that, that's in chapter 7, verses 4 through 8. It talks about them doing this during the tribulation. So part of the timetable, part of God's timetable, we, if we want to know what's going on, keep your eyes on on Israel. They're a nation. Now, God said they were going to become a nation. And they have. The next thing. Now I don't know if it's going to happen in our, before the rapture. Or if it's going to happen after. It's going to happen. But the, the, but the Jews in Israel, in Jerusalem right now. They're talking about rebuilding the temple. They're, they have plans to rebuild the temple. And once they rebuild the temple. They're going to start the animal sacrifices again. Now when that happens. You better, you better be right. Because Jesus is coming. Because all this is going to happen in the tribulation. Because in the tribulation, when they rebuild the temple, Satan, the Antichrist, is going to come into that temple and proclaim to be God. But that building's got to, that temple has to be built before he can do that. So if we're if if we see, see the Jews right now have plans on on rebuilding the temple, my gosh! I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know when he's coming. I don't know the day or the hour. But the signs that I see. It's closed, my friends. It's closed. Jesus is coming. And you can believe it or not, but He's coming. Now I have a, a teaching on the last days. If y'all want to know more about that. Now in Acts 15, verses 14 through 16. Simeon, Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for His name. What is that name? Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. Now, when Gentiles become Christians, well, I gave it away. <laughs> when, when Gentiles believe the Lord and become real Jews, was, what's the name they get? What names do we get? We don't get, we, we're not called Jews. Christians. We're called Christians. And that's the name. Then after this time of grace, it says in verse 15, And to this agree the words of the prophet, as it is written, after this, I will return, and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which I just told you about, which has fallen down, and I will build it again, the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. After this, referring back to verse 14, giving the Gentiles a chance to have his name, Christians, he will return and build the temple, the temple of David. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to happen before the rapture or after rapture, but it's going to happen right there, right at, right around the rapture. It has to happen because that temple has to be built so the Antichrist can go into that temple and say, "I am God." Matthew twenty two fourteen. For many are called, but few are chosen. Not not everybody who is called wants to come. That's what it's saying. The Lord calls everyone. In the book of John, the first chapter, I forgot what verse it is, but the first chapter it says. I enlighten the heart of every man. God says, I show myself to every man. 
every man. I don't care if it's a one man in the middle of the jungle by himself. God's going to show himself to that man. Okay? Because nobody, on the day of judgment, nobody's going to be able to stand before God and say, I didn't know. They're not going to be able to. Because he says, in the book of John, the first chapter, I enlightened the heart of every. We know what the word every means? Every man. So God chose the Jews, but they didn't follow his ways. Are we going to do any better than them? Let me ask you this. Are we doing any better than them? I mean, look at it. How many people are getting saved? I belong to a church where there's about, I don't know, 200, maybe 300 on Sunday morning. How many people get baptized? We might have one person get baptized every two or three months. That's sickening. That's very poor on our part. A church that size, we should be people getting baptized every Sunday. But why aren't they? Because we are not doing our ministry. We're not out there being witnesses for the Lord. I say we. That's true. Because we're about in the same boat. Let me say this. For, ki- for kids, the accountability of you know what you're doing, it really doesn't come at 12. My daughter, she got baptized when she was somewhere around there. I forgot what age it was, but somewhere around there. And she told me, Daddy, I'm getting baptized. And she I really didn't do much. She said, you're not very excited. And I told her, I said, listen, you haven't been in the world. When you get into the world and you got peer, these kids want you to do this and do that. You got drugs being thrown at you. You got alcohol being thrown at you. You have guys being thrown at you. If you still want to be a Christian and turn all that down, you want to turn that on, turn all that down. The temptations of the world, if you can turn all that down. Then I'll be happy. Then I'll know, okay, you, you're a Christian. But there's a lot of kids. There's a lot of, we, I see kids getting baptized in that water. Kids. They, they haven't even been in the world to be tempted yet. They don't know if they want to live for the Lord yet. They haven't been out to the, to the world to see all the sinful pleasures. Because that's what it looks like. It looks like pleasures. But it's sin. So when you really, you know Okay, I have given my life to the Lord. I I have become a new creature, or I'm wanting to become a new creature. Then you know you're born again. God said those who did accept Him, He made them spiritual Jews. So we are spiritual Jews. But the name we got is Christians. So, why did God choose the Jews? He did choose the Jews, but who's those Jews now? Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. This is not Baptist Church. You can say amen. Yeah. <laughs>